Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, February 23rd. I'm Jim Weatherup, Chairman of the Oswego County Legislature. My guest again today is Diane Oldenburg, Senior Public Health Educator for the County Health Department. Today I want to address an, an issue that was raised in a report last night by Amanda Hall on CNY Central Television. This is a topic that is important to many of us. The local report quoted a parent and the Central Square School District Superintendent questioning the inconsistency between how Central Square and some other schools are handling spectators at indoor athletic events. Last month, the governor announced that schools and youth recreation leagues could resume athletic activities such as basketball, ice hockey, volleyball, and others. The state made each county health department responsible for defining the, the requirements for permitting those activities. Our county policy was developed with input from many of our school districts. My own local school district, Central Square, and our superintendent were part of the decision-making process. The consensus was that spectators would not be allowed to attend indoor athletic events. In Onondaga County, the county left the decision of spectator attendance up to individual school districts. Many large and small school districts in Onondaga County also made the decision to limit spectator attendance including the Salt City Athletic Conference. That conference includes Baldwinsville, Liverpool, Cicero, North Syracuse, and many other schools. Cayuga, Jefferson, Lewis, and Madison County Health Departments also adopted policies similar to Oswego County's. This was not an easy decision for anyone to make. As a parent, I know how important it is to be there and support our kids. It can be frustrating and even painful for students parents and school districts to miss out on student athletic events. But these decisions are made in the best interest of students and the community as a whole and are based on input from the schools. It's important to recognize that the County Health Department follows the guidance outlined by the State Department of Health. As we receive written guidance from the state, we update our guidance. This week will be a busy week for our Health Department and all our community partners who are involved in the vaccine clinics. We are receiving supplies of vaccines that were delayed by last week's storm, and we also received an additional allocation of more than 1,000 doses from New York State. This means we can start to vaccinate people with underlying health conditions and continue the process of giving vaccines to the 1B essential worker population, which our local health department is assigned to provide the vaccine to. That group includes public-facing grocery store workers, food service workers, in-person college professors, and K-12 school faculty and staff. Some of the additional vaccines are the result of our regional partnership in the Central New York COVID Response Group. We constantly advocate for Oswego County to acquire as much vaccine as we can. I want to thank our, th our state representative for our region, Jessica DeSerce, of the Department of Agriculture for helping us to get extra supplies so our more residents can receive vaccines this week. As of today, according to the State Department of Health, 12.9% of our residents have received at least one dose of vaccine and more than 9,100 residents had received the complete series of doses. Again, this is a community effort. I thank our public health director, Jen Chang Wong, Dr. Christina Lipke, the health department team, county employees, and the many volunteers who make our vaccination clinics a smooth and safe process. I also want to thank our community partners, such as Oswego Health, Pulaski Urgent Care, Connects Care, the local pharmacies, school districts, and other partners for their hard work in providing clinics around the county. Everyone needs an appointment before they can get the vaccine. You need to go to the state's Am I Eligible website to see if you meet the criteria. People with underlying health conditions will need to bring a letter or note from their doctor to their vaccine appointment stating that they are eligible. To sign up for a local clinic, go to health.oswegocounty.com. You can also register for a vaccine at one of the state-run clinics, including at the New York State Fairgrounds through the state's Am I Eligible website. I am sorry to say that we've lost one more member of our community to COVID during the past week. On behalf of the Oswego County Legislature, I once again extend our sympathy to their families and loved ones. Our case numbers are declining, 
and more of our residents are receiving the vaccine, but we can't let our guard down yet. And now I invite Diane to share this week's report from the County Health Department. Thank you, Chairman Weatherup. As of today, our seven day positivity rate is 1.5%. Again, this is welcome news, but all of us need to continue our safety measures, including masking, frequent hand washing and social distancing until the community's herd immunity is established. As of this afternoon, we have a total active positive case of cases of 140, total tests that have been conducted 148,054, total cumulative positive cases 6,234, total negative results received 139,700, total released from uh, isolation 6,005, deaths reported by the New York State Department of Health 89, total quarantined or in mandatory isolation 350, total number vaccinated by County Health Department staff 4,460 uh, as of this afternoon. This includes 2,671 first dose vaccines and 1,789 second dose vaccines. As Chairman Weatherup mentioned, last week's vaccine supply was delayed by the weather. This week, we are in the process of scheduling clinics for people with underlying health conditions. Please visit our webpage at health.oswegocounty.com and click on the link for vaccine information. Links to register for an appointment should be available tomorrow afternoon. You need an appointment to receive the vaccine. Everyone should go through the New York State MI eligible website to determine if they are eligible. Everyone needs to show proof of eligibility, such as a work ID, pay stub, or statement from a physician. Those without proof of eligibility will not be vaccinated. People aged 65 and over can register at participating pharmacies such as Kinney Pharmacies, Wayne Drugs, and Walgreen, Walgreen Pharmacies. Many of these clinics have long lists. Please keep in mind that although we are receiving more vaccine this week than last week, none of our providers is receiving a consistent supply. We encourage you to continue to explore all options. Our vaccine clinics are a community effort and we can always use more volunteers to help with registering, screening, uh, traffic flow, monitoring, and other tasks. A medical background is not required. To sign up, please visit the Health Department's coronavirus uh, page and click on the link for medical volunteering. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. The Oswego County Office for the Aging is offering boxes of canned goods and shelf-stable food items to seniors who may have a hard time getting to the store to pick up food items during the pandemic and snowy weather. This program is open to anyone age 60 or older who needs help making ends meet. The 30 days of food boxes were made up and donated by the community. There's a limit of one box per household. To make arrangements to receive a box, please call the County Office for the Aging at 315-349-3484. Thank you again for doing your part to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Stay safe on the roads, and please continue to maintain safe behaviors, including hand washing, face masking, and social distancing.